It doesn't really matter where you go, but tiles are always one of those things you pretty much see everywhere, without even sometimes realizing it. They're on sidewalks, they're in restaurants, they're in shopping malls, they're in your house, they're in your bathroom. And um, that makes them a pretty um, common item that you might want to have in some of your Blender scenes. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make um, photo reel tiles in Blender using a PBR workflow. And you can see this is the node setup here. And not only am I going to show you how to make these realistic looking tiles and where you can get the image textures, I'm going to show you how to set up adaptive subdivision, which is going to give it the ability once it renders to also physically displace the actual geometry which is gonna take it from that flat looking texture, that really boring flat looking texture, to this really 3D looking um, tile thing that just pops out in your render, which I hope you're gonna enjoy. So if you think this is something you wanna learn and add to your workflow for Blender, uh, keep watching. So down in the description, so down in the description below, you're gonna find a link to this texture here, which is on hdrihaven.com. It's a free texture. You don't even need an account to download it. Now, when you open it up, you're gonna see under the download section here, you're able to actually download each one of the different maps individually. But what I recommend you do is you come here to the all maps section, and it's gonna give you some options here. You can see here, you have a JPEG um, range here, and then you have the, the PNG ones. Now I would recommend you go for the PNG ones, which are bigger file formats that are gonna take a bit more time to download, but they do have a better quality compression format over the JPEG. So I just went with the 4K category, and I went for the PNG, which is about 355 megabytes. But if you want, you can even opt for the PNG um, 2K, which is only 89, which is quite a big difference. So I went and I downloaded the 355 megabyte one, I just put that zip folder, because it comes in a zip folder, onto my desktop. I extracted those Im image textures and I put them inside of this folder here called text or textures. So now that we have that and you've done that as well, you can follow along with this particular tutorial. So we'll just go ahead and jump into Blender. And for this tutorial, I'm just gonna delete the default cube and the default lamp. And I'm just gonna hit X and delete those two. Then we're gonna go Shift A and we're gonna add in a plane. And with that plane active, we're gonna hit S and then two to scale it up two times, hit enter, and then go control A or command A and just apply that scale. Um, so now that we have that done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in a proper light. So we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna to go to our light option. So we're gonna add in an area light. And I'm just gonna move this area light up and I'm just gonna rotate it in like this. So just have a light coming from the side. It doesn't really matter where you place it, just have it at a bit of an angle. Come to your light settings here and let's make the strength something like 300 and increase the size a little bit. Don't make the size too big because the bigger you're gonna make that size, the more diffuse or scattered the light's gonna look. So we want it to be something like that will give us a nice kind of sharp light. Um, you can always duplicate the light later on if you need more light. But for now, if we hit Z and we go into our rendered view, you can see we have the light being cast on a plane here, but we're actually gonna go to our render settings and currently we're in EV. But because we're gonna be using some different features in Blender that are only compatible with cycles, we're gonna make it cycles. So we're gonna change the render engine to cycles. And for me, because I have a GPU, I'm gonna enable my GPU. But if you don't have one, you can just leave it as a CPU. Um, so for now, we'll just leave it at that. But let's come to our world settings and let's just take the color here. And uh, you could add a HDRI in here, but I'm just gonna make the world a little bit brighter, just like that. So now we have a light in our scene. And um, I'm actually even gonna go to my render settings here. I'm just gonna go down to the film and just enable the transparent under the film here. I just like the way that looks a little bit better. So let's go into our shading workspace. And once we're inside of our shading workspace, once again, just hit Z, make sure to go into your rendered view here. And with this plane active, we can hit new to add a new material. And let's just call this tiles. So we've called it tiles. And by default, as you already know, we get a principal shader plugged into a material output. So to save us a bit of time, just make sure you go to your edit, preferences, and you go to your add-on section. And up here, just type in node. And make sure when you type a node to enable and tick the node wrangler box here. When you enable node wrangler, it enables you to select the principal shader and then hit control T or command T. And it's gonna add in these nodes here for you. So you can see here we have a texture coordinate, a mapping and an image texture. So let's come here to the image texture, click on the open tab and let's go to the desktop wherever you extracted those textures. In my case, it's in this folder here. 
make sure you have the preview enabled up here. But what we're trying to go for here is the large gray tiles diffuse. So you can see here it says DIFF. So click on the diffuse and then go open. And now you can see we are seeing the diffuse here. Now, I'm not quite happy with the scale here, but what you could do is if you just come over here to your drop down, you can go and just select that diffuse texture there. And you can just go into edit mode and go into your UV settings and just over here, scale it all up and that'll scale it up over here. But that is kind of a, you know, a primitive way of working around it. So what I like to do is I just like to stay into my shading workspace and I just want to come over here to this mapping coordinate and I'm simply going to change the scale vectors down here to two. So I'm just changing it to two and we don't have to, um, in fact, you don't even have to worry about the Z coordinate unless you're going to be having like a plane going up but just make sure the X and the Y are set to two. And now that scale looks a little bit better. So let's get working on the materials, which is the rest of the material here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in some more maps. So let's select add image texture here. We're gonna hit Shift D to duplicate it. Then we're gonna move it down. And to make sure we have the same vector properties, we're just gonna take that vector and plug it into the vector of this new image texture. And we're gonna come in here and we're gonna go to this little folder and this time, it's gonna take us to that texture folder and this time we're gonna get our tiles roughness. We're gonna get the roughness here. And as you might've guessed, we're gonna take the color here and plug it into the roughness of the principled shader. And though you probably won't notice it, if you kind of come at a little bit of an angle here and you look here, you can now see we have a kind of more ununiform roughness to the tiles here. In fact, if I plug this out, you can see without, and if I plug the, it, it in here to the roughness now, you can see it makes quite a difference. You can also go Shift A, you can go to your, col your um, search bar here and type in color and get a color ramp, place it on this cable here, and now you can grab these black and white value sliders, drag them in, and you can create a bit more contrast over here, but don't overdo it. So that just gives you a way of kind of controlling the roughness a little bit more. If you bring it up too much on the black value, you can get it looking a little bit too glossy. So just kind of mess around with that till you get something that uh, works for you. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go and grab this texture, Shift D, I'm gonna bring another one down. I'm gonna go to the file file here and this time we're gonna get our normal map. And we're gonna go open. And we can't really plug that directly into the normal here. So we're gonna go Shift A and we're gonna type in normal and we're gonna get a normal map. I'm gonna place it over here and then we're gonna take the color output from that normal texture, plug it into the color like so, and then take the normal here and then plug it into the normal of the principal BSDF shader. And now you're gonna see it's doing this thing here, but the reason it's doing that is because we haven't given it a coordinate. So let's come over here to our mapping and let's take that vector output and plug it into the vector input of this normal texture here. And let's come to the strength and let's make it 0.4. I guess now we have some normal um, maps making a little bit of bump there and you can kind of see that makes it look a lot better already So you can mess around with that strength there But for me something like 0.4 or 0.3 um, is adequate for this So now so we're just going to get into the fun part the displacement but because we're going to be working with actual Physical displacement where the geometry itself is going to be displaced We're not going to be plugging it into this normal stuff here. So we're going to go duplicate this um, Image texture here shift D to duplicate it now we're gonna go click on the folder and this time we're gonna get the displacement, which is this one here, the DISP. Open that one. And once again, make sure you connect that vector cable to the vector input here, that's very important. So I've connected the vector there. And now we're gonna take that color output. If I just give it a little bit more room here. I'm gonna take that color output, I'm gonna plug it into the displacement of our material output node. And you can already see it's giving a bit of an effect there. But once we get into our subdivision stuff, we're gonna set it up so it's gonna physically actually displace the geometry of the plane here. So what we're gonna do now is before we actually add the displacement modifiers, so we go over to our modifiers and we go and add a subdivision, sorry, I said displacement, I meant a subdivision surface modifier. And we bump this up. You're gonna see we do need to actually go into edit mode, select all the geometry, right click, and then click subdivide. Then come here to the subdivision tab and give it something like 35 cuts. And just something like that should help it out. And then tab out. And now we have a subdivided mesh. 
But at the moment, you're not gonna see anything here for adaptive subdivisions. So you actually need to come over to your render settings and under the render engine options here, you need to come to the featured set and you need to make it experimental. Then go over to your modifiers and now under the subdivision surface modifier, you got a new option here called adaptive subdivision, which you can enable. And now this displacement will be affecting this. But what we need to do as well is just go over to our materials. This is super important. And under the tiles material here, you need to now go to the displacement options. So you're gonna go down to the displacement tab and over here, you need to come under the settings actually. So under displacement, there's gonna be a setting. So come down to the settings and you need to come here under the surface and change the displacement from bump only to displacement and bump. So now if we hit Z and we go into our rendered view, you can see we actually have physical displacement that is occurring. So how cool is that? You can now see it's actually physically um, making the mesh displace like that. And you can see that there's this orange outline here. That's actually the plane where it's originally positioned. What you're seeing here is actually the render. And that's got to do with kind of how the grayscale is placing things. So what you can do is you can go Shift A, search, and you can just get a displacement. So type in displace and get a displacement. And then place it on that cable. And now you've got this height value here and you've got this mid-level value. And those values can help you kind of adjust the grayscale and how kind of the, the height or depth of the, the displacement map, how that's gonna be affected. And I've just realized that I actually had to plug. This shouldn't be in a normal. So come here to the displacement and make sure that this socket is plugged into the height where I just put in 0.1. Okay, so now that is acting the way it should be. And this is where we're gonna to come to the mid-level here. And I'm gonna make that 0.1. So make sure to make that 0.1. And then we're gonna come here to the scale and we're gonna make that 0.5. And that gives you control of the displacement, okay? So where, how the gray scale is affecting the height of that actual displacement. And you can see here the orange there is where our plane actually is. And the render is, what you're seeing is pretty much the render. So um, yeah, that is making the tiles look really cool. So now we can go over to our displace, uh, displacement modifier, or not displacement, I should say, subdivision surface modifier, and we can work with the adaptive subdiv a little bit here. So the higher you actually set the dicing scale here, the um, lower quality it's gonna be, but the quicker it's gonna render. But for me, I'm gonna be leaving it at a dicing scale of one, and that should all be okay. Um, don't worry about anything under the advanced. In fact, at the moment, there's not really anything you have to change here. So now you can see here, that is all set up. So let's go back to our layout and um, let's just go into our camera view. And I'm just gonna select the camera and I'm just gonna zoom in here, this. And let's quickly just go into our solid workspace, maybe zoom in just a little bit more and then we can go to our render and just give this a test render. And here you can see we have the final rendered result which speaks for itself. And if you actually zoom in, you can see we actually have this displacement happening here because of the adaptive subdivision. So it's making it not kind of look like that typical flat image texture renders that you tend to get. So that's a really cool thing about this sort of workflow. I hope you guys enjoyed this and that you're able to make some really realistic tiled textures for free and um, have fun with it. Um, use it in some of your projects and I'll see you guys next time for another Blender uh, tutorial.